Welcome to this week's episode, and by this week, I mean this <laughs> month's episode of the Board and Scale Podcast. We're back, everybody. Yeah! The three, the three of us here. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> That was like skinwalker in the woods noise, dude. <laughs> Chupacabra. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast, Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. And the penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. You know I don't play right, 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 right. The three of us are back here for another episode of the podcast. I know it's been a... A very a big year. long while, but between us, us wild. as in me and Kenzie traveling and being crazy busy, and them also having or Kevin having some traveling stuff, and Dwayne, I don't know what he was doing, but he traveled <laughs> I was to Houston. Something. Yeah. Oh, that's true. To lift heavy things. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. yes. And we'll, maybe we'll talk about that. But anyways, we are back with this episode. Um, we're gonna try to be try and get back on a consistent schedule again. Um, and today. We're just going to talk about some of the stuff that we've been doing. Just vibe. Yeah. Since the last pod, I guess. You're just vibing. And we're going to start with a very structured vibe, <laughs> <laughs> which will just be the highlights. And, you know, anything that you guys want to share that you've, you know, had fun with since the last time we got together, which was probably four years ago, <coughs> in YouTube time. You you've know, all forgotten everything, about us. Everything on the internet is dilated, but... It's all snake people now. Yeah. Does anyone want to go first? Sure. I'll do. I'll do one, and then we can you know go from there. All right. What if we just What if we just did one, 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 and then one, one, one? Yeah. Sick. Let's I'm do it. With that. So I'm gonna go with with. I guess it's probably like a. We'll call it like a like a new memory. Like I don't know. Um, Dinosaur Island, not the time that we played, but credit. For the time that we played, because that introduced me to the game. You look confused. So, since the last time we recorded a pod, uh, Dwayne introduced me to the game Dinosaur Island. Uh, We played it. I loved it. I wanted it. And uh, somebody was selling a copy of the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition. You loved it? I loved it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, So much so he spilled wine on it. I'm just kidding. I did. I, I did. It was like it was like a droplet. Oh. It was fine. <laughs> it was okay. And uh, somebody was selling the the deluxe edition with like the liquid uh, extreme liquid edition or whatever, like the fifth player expansion. And all that, was that other stuff was that with wine pre spilled on it or pre spilled? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were selling it for like eighty bucks, like all together. Also had geek up bits and everything. It was it was a really good deal. Nice. Um, I tried to. <laughs> At the same time, to get uh, Kanban, he was selling Kanban for super cheap and the Gallerist, which I was trying to get for him. And the two Lacerda games were sold out, or that somebody had bought them already. Mm. So I did pull the trigger on Dinosaur Island. And um, so last weekend for for Fourth of July, um, I went to Orlando to hang out with uh, two of my best friends, uh, Marcus and Jamie. And um, they've uh, they've gotten a little bit. They've gotten into board games in, in the last few years and uh they both have uh kind of themes that they're big into jamie is a big plant person um marcus marcus has a lot of different interests but one of them is is jurassic park dinosaur stuff he also likes vaporwave Ooh, right wow so <laughs> that, wow yeah so i was like all right this game is perfect it's it's vaporwave dinosaurs yeah. right so i bought i brought verdant uh, for Jamie to teach her, which is of course a plant game about putting plants in houses, um, and then I brought Dinosaur Island to play with Marcus. It was a lot. Um, it was a big teach. Um, I think they liked it. Uh, I think it'd be one of those ones they'd benefit from a few more times. But um, the play wasn't necessarily like amazing or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but it was just it's just one of those things where it's really fun to to find games that are just you think are perfect for people, whether it's thematically or otherwise, you're just like, man, this that you're excited to share. Exactly. You know, just so I'm really glad I got to bring it with. I'm really glad we got to play it Um, again. I don't know if they, I don't know if either of them enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to them and playing with them. Uh, But yeah. Yeah. So thanks. 
Yeah. Hmm. I really like it too. Yeah. It's a really good game. He's and like, I skimped on it for a long time, which I hate. What's crazy is before he bought the game, I sold mine. <laughs> I had the Kickstarter version, totally liquid Kickstarter version. Yeah. And it was like, okay. And then it just stopped getting played because we were still buying a bunch of other games. Yeah. And eventually I was like, ah, I probably don't need it. I probably don't need it to be in here. So, yeah, so that's yeah. fair. I, I mean, sold it. And then, like, I think, I don't know, it was like two weeks later. He shows up with it and was like, you have to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything else that is like thematically hard-coded dinosaurs. Yeah. Right? I have dragon type stuff, big monster boss battler type stuff. But like I don't have anything that is hard-coded dinosaurs right now. Draftosaurus. Yeah. Do you I have think, Draftosaurus? No. Oh. Um, the only other one that I <laughs> I have a Kickstarter crowdfunding one, um, Crustaceous Rails. Is a train uh, game? It is a kind of a train. Dinosaurs train, train on dinosaur. train? It is. It is. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. And it's also, I think it's also kind of got a vaporwave vibe to it, too. So it's very, very neon. Yeah. At any rate. He's like, and my highlight is actually Dinosaur Island, also without you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's up? Go ahead. All right. Yeah. Uh, so in between. Our last play, or our last video in this one, I had my big Lacerda kick. Um, had? Which, Le kick like, over? Well, that's when it, like, kicked off. Okay. When we played a, a Lacerda every time we got together. <laughs> <laughs> I So I played I played Kanban. Kanban. It's Kanban in my head. <laughs> I, we played Kanban, and uh, it was a while ago. And I really liked it. And I don't know. For some reason, like, we played it again. And for some reason, I was like, fuck, dude. This game's so good. And I was like, I need to try another Lacerda game. And the next one that I played was Inventions. Yeah, you bought it. I bought it. <laughs> because I had played I had played Kanban three times. Uh, before that, and I was like, "Oh my god, this game's sick!" And so I looked into Inventions, and it was brand new. So I got it. Me, Kenzie, did Derek play? Derek did not play. Me, Kenzie, and Sebastian played, and I was like, "Oh yeah, Lacert is that guy." And so Inventions is my highlight. Um, uh, one of. My highlights. And I know I've said that I liked, I would rather play Weather Machine, but Inventions is just like, in my opinion, it's an easier teach and it's easier to like just get into over Weather Machine. But both great games, in my opinion. Inventions is just like so. Oh, I don't know what it is. It feels like you're it feels like you're always doing something. And I love the way that the the worker placement works is that like you're kind of setting yourself up for the next round almost. Because you have one piece that stays on the board and two other pieces that you're going to be moving around the entire game. And the piece that stays on is the last uh, piece that you'll move and the way that it works is there's five sections if you go into a section you cannot play in that anymore so your last turn will dictate your next round pretty much a blocked space yeah, yeah. and but then comes into play the chain actions which there's a little symbol on a lot of things where if you activate it, you can spend a chain token to then pretty much take an entire turn. In the middle of, yeah. Or in the, the middle end, of yeah. your turn. Yeah. Um, and I know that sounds like AP hell, which first couple times you play, it probably is going to be. 
and it sounds like it probably stops the game like to a halt, but it really doesn't. It's at least with the I love times the train we've, action. At least the times we've played it, we've gotten through it pretty smoothly. Yeah, for and a, then a big Lacerda game, mm-hmm. yeah. and then being able to build your your board with the invention or the technology tiles that allow you to pretty do pretty much like pretty do pretty do that allow you to like unlock unlock more uh the swag what are they the little guys explorers or whatever yeah something like that yeah. and take even more chain actions by flipping over the red the those brown tiles and then the end game scoring tiles that you can slot in it's a it's a lot but it's like it doesn't feel like too much. It, it, the game just makes, it just makes sense. Yeah. We were like 20 minutes into playing it the first time and I, it clicked and I was just like, oh yeah, I'm liking this. <laughs> oh yeah. Can't wait to play it again already. Um, so yeah, I mean, at this point I've played count, I've played Kanban, I've played inventions, I've played weather machine, Kanban still above all of them. But I really love all of them. Next one is the Gallerist that I need to try. That's and not on Mars. true. Oh, on Mars, yeah. Somebody, because somebody somebody, like, somebody wanted to play. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> not with. Not, I didn't want to play without you. We tried to play. Ju- <laughs> we did try to play, and I goofed it up the first time. <laughs> and you were hard pressed. Yes, to I was. get that bitch back out on the table. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot to learn, man. I, I I don't know what about it. Like it was I just And that's the crazy part. Like my enjoyment for those Lacerda games, like even though you were like kinda muddling through the teach, even Horribly muddling. what I could get, I was like, damn, I would like this. Like I already can see how this is gonna go and I'm I'm gonna like it. Well, maybe we get to play it someday. So maybe my highlight's just Lacerda. <laughs> yeah. Vital, just you're dive, a fucking, into, you're that guy, man. Diving into those games. <laughs> it, not, not only are they like very stimulating games mentally, but they're also by, you know, Eagle Griffin, the publisher, they're all just like manufactured so mm-hmm. pretty and so well. They all have organizers in the box. All the stuff in it is like upgraded components, you know, in another game, it'd be an upgraded component. They're standard in these games. I will. You're paying the price for it up front, <laughs> which I know one of us cannot get with. <laughs> one of us is not not able to, even though that one person buys all this bullshit from Kickstarter, <laughs> spends so much money on all in pledges and Kickstarter. But no, I don't want this master designer's game. <laughs> I never said that. Mr. Sure you didn't say that. You say you don't want to pay the price. It's just, I think, component, it's good. They're good. The components are good. I just, I don't think they're $120, $160, $200 worth of components. I just don't, it's not there. Like, you can't, you cannot convince me that that's how much it costs to produce those games when people are making games with very similar components for a fraction of the price. Now, do not get me wrong. These games are expensive. Expensive. Yeah, they are now, pretty expensive. Mind you, like there was a sadist part of me that was like, maybe I should just get the, the bundle, bundle for thousand dollar bundle, eleven hundred dollars <laughs> for seven, eight games. It comes so, up because so, it's all yeah. the premium stuff. It comes with absolutely everything. The mats, all the come, upgrade pro- yeah. promos, and it puts it pushes the price like per game down to like one hundred and fifty or one hundred and sixty bucks, which is like over three hundred dollars worth of savings total, but. You have to want all that other stuff. Because, like, these Kanban is a great example, right? Mm-hmm. You don't need the metal cars. Mm-hmm. They're cool, I'm sure, but you don't need them, right? And I don't even know what are the other upgraded components are for the rest of the stuff. More mats. Like, no, the mats are an additional $150 bonus add on top of it. Mm. The and they're little, not... Like, MTG-style mats. They're not, like, play yeah, mats. They're not gameplay mats. Yeah. It's not a board. Oh, it's just thematic. It's literally yeah. just thematic stuff. Mm. Which is cool, but... 
you know, and it's great. Hey, throw another 150 bucks at you worth of content again. And it, they're producing it and calling it. So when they say it's $150 worth of content, it's like, well, would anyone actually pay $150 for that? I don't know. But anyway, it exists, it's not my turn. It exists to talk because about. someone will buy it. <laughs> yeah. No, 100%. But inventions, a.k.a. Lacerda. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my highlight is going to be actually related to the scale portion of the board and scale thing. We recently hatched successfully for the first time ever Western Hognose Snakes. We hatched five out of the six eggs that we got from mom. And all five babies seem extraordinarily healthy. They're all very active. Very they, cute little babies. They're very hissy, which is a good sign that they're they're, you know, they're doing what they're supposed to. I am in working on feeding them and getting them started on eating. They some of them are eating, some of them are still being, you know, you know, fighting me. So something I have to deal with, but I'm still very proud and still very happy to have hatched those hog noses specifically, along with 18 string bean little corn snakes who are, they were like a week after the hog noses. So they're a lot earlier in their development still, but raising them up as well. And I'm just really excited to finally get that part of uh, our whole thing here started. So yeah, the snakes. And if you haven't seen the hatching video for the hog nose, that is already up. And by the time this goes up, the corn snake hatching video might be up as well too. So look for those links uh, here or here, or just go and find them in the channel if you want. But yeah. Cool. I think, uh, so we had a lot of games. So actually uh, you could call like June as a whole was a pretty successful month. It was my, single most number of uh, games played I'm not sure if it was the most unique number played but um, pretty close because I don't play a whole lot of games more than once in a, at a time uh, but it was 51 plays uh, in June so it's pretty, pretty more than that. more than a game a day average that's pretty cool yeah I mean it does help that there are definitely some of the science some of the smaller games in there like uh, you know habitats Tonto Core you know Bosa Corsons we played. What's that? Did I say it wrong? <laughs> no, no, no. It's just yeah. Tonto Core fucking. <laughs> yeah. No Mercy, Llama. That's Coup. hilarious. That was the day that uh, we were supposed to do Clock Tower and Clock Tower fell through. So there's some, there's some, but there's a big month. There's a lot of good games. I mean, this, the month alone uh, in June played both Kanban, Weather Machine and on Mars. So three listed games. It's pretty awesome. Um, Got to play Scythe, which is my personal favorite game of all time. Um, not that, that ratings video will be up tomorrow. Nice. Not tomorrow because tomorrow today is a different day. <laughs> it's actually already up, so go check yeah. the channel. Uh, but I think uh, I think what I'll I'll throw it out to for my uh, other than just like the general like hey Joan was great that was awesome. Um, I'm gonna give it to Viticulture. The Tuscany edition. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I played Viticulture several times now. Of course, it's my number five um, game on the, the the BOTG. I've only ever played the base version of it, though, and it was one of the last times that we played with Enrique. Um, <laughs> just I could not. Every single time he would, like, a, a rule would come up or something would come up, he'd be like, Oh wait, no, it's like that in in Tuscany. It's that oh the Tuscany. Oh, that's in the Tuscany edition. Oh, the mm. in the Tuscany edition. And he wasn't he wasn't even like dogging on it. He wasn't like oh it's so much better or whatever. He's like oh it's just different. It's just different. And he's like oh yeah, I think you'd really enjoy it. And um, if you go back to the Viticulture Battle of the Games video, um, and like look at my complaints, Tuscany solves every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it does make it a, a, a significantly more enjoyable game because um, it just deals with some of those those problems. Like <clears throat> probably the biggest one is, is that you don't have uh, – there's a mechanism now in the game where you can exchange cards. Mm. Like that alone was one of like the biggest things to be like, hey, if I don't want to – um, if I don't like the the wine order cards that I got or I don't like the the vines I got or whatever, you can trade them. Um, which is pretty great. Uh, you can also sell wine directly out of your um, your uh, your cellar for points. Oh, so nice. even if you don't know, you won't get residual payments for them because you're not filling an order. Right. 
But you but get flat points. You get flat points. Nice. So if you end up with stuff, you're like, well, I don't really need this or whatever for one reason or another. Um, there's just alternative ways to get points. It also breaks the, the, the year up into four seasons. And you actually okay. go through those four seasons. And the bonuses that you get, the further down you are in the turn track, the more bonuses you get as you go from season to season. You don't get the stuff at the beginning of the year. Mm. You get it as you transition from season to season. Um, so there's a lot of great upgrades. Um, some stuff maybe seemed a little bit unnecessary, but I think they acknowledge it's also not necessary. The, uh, like the structures take or leave it. It's another add on thing that you can throw in there. Um, but, um, yeah, really enjoyed it. The new it. workers were cool. Oh yeah. New workers, different. Uh, there's like a whole bunch of different kinds. You pick two. Um, so you can pay extra to get these specialized workers that have some additional bonus. Kind of like the grande worker. Kind of like the Grande Worker. The Doesn't replace worker. it. But um, I'm trying it's to think. Like of, the, which, which ones do we have? There was the... Is it always a, like a man and a woman? The the pieces okay. are a man and a woman to differ, differentiate. But So like one of the ones that we had was if, if you go to a space where the bonus is already taken, you get it anyway. Yeah. So you could not occupy the space like a grande worker but if like say there are three spaces and two of them are filled and the other one doesn't have a bonus but you're playing a five to six player game you could go there and then claim one of the other two bonuses yeah so that was pretty cool and i'm trying to remember what the other one did i don't remember oh there's there's oh, multiple t- like that was the one where if you went there with that oh worker you could take that somebody season, back That's you could right. take a basic worker back there's multiple of each, like there's multiple abilities of each thing. We just happen to play with those two. Correct. There are different. Oh. There are different cards. So that's why you have two cards. That's you have why a you set have for two. a game. Hmm? You have a set for a game. Yeah, and we just do it random. Nice. I really so. liked those. Yeah, those were really cool, and they're not. They were super easy to integrate. Yeah. You know, it didn't take a whole lot. So, yeah, generally just improved the game across the board, uh, which will give it new life and new vigor. Whenever we do Battle of the Games for next year. Oh. Two electric Boogaloo. Mm. Little, little teaser there. Yeah, maybe. Of what may maybe. Or may we'll still see. Be on the list. <laughs> see if it holds its spot as the number one worker placement game for us. Oh, mm. okay. We'll see. All right. Dweezy? I'm going to stop you if you don't start saying something <sighs> that I think it should be. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, my other one is going to be uh, Cortison. Nope. Why don't you take a look at your arm? <laughs> oh, dude. Hey, do you want to get me started on this? Yeah. <laughs> this will be the whole video. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, but Cortison's great The people great love game. you. I do have to get it out, though. Cortison's fantastic. That can be your highlight. Small okay, box game. Super quick, super easy to learn. What would you... Set collection? Kind of. You're... You are... <laughs> you are... Determining the the value of different color cards that you are giving and that you are giving and taking. It's giving. <laughs> so like yeah. there's six different colors. You have three cards. You play one card on yourself. You play one card in the middle of the table and you play one card on somebody else. The card that you play in the middle of the table determines whether that color is positive or negative points. Uh with the ones that you have in front of you. And it's just very quick. It's very snappy. Um, I I think since I got it, it's, it has not left my bag. And at least every time I've been at Black Potion, we've played it. It is very much so a before. So dude, that pretty. art. Oh, my God. Dude, the gilded cards, too. Hollow foil gilding. So good. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, just that was nice Cortison's. Touch, you know? mm. Yeah, just especially nice for a small box game. Like, it's just, it's nice. It's tight. It's elegant. Pandasaurus, too. Just adds Which, that much more like, Nar, wow, right these are that. fancy people. Yeah. Nar, they made, I mean, they're the ones who made Dinosaur Island, too. Yeah. Emerge. Mm-hmm. Some other know, things. I don't know about that one. <laughs> that is a game of all time. <laughs> it is a game. You didn't like Emerge? I've never played it, but I'm just not interested. 
That was good. We played it. Yeah. I thought it was fun. It wasn't my favorite. It, it wasn't the best thing ever, but Solid. it was like six and a half, seven. Yeah. If someone was like, hey, let's play it, I'd be like, all right, cool. All right. But what uh, Sebastian was alluding to was obviously Blood on the Clock Tower. Obviously. Only the, only the best party game of all time. But specifically, party game, huh? It is a it is the best party game of all time. Can if you <laughs> go into BGA Mur- murder murder mystery dinner party game BGG. I'm sorry, BGA. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to play through BGA, dude, through the chat. <laughs> best social deduction game of all time. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Hey, if uh, well, I, more I, I heard Dwayne say that if uh, if we get a thousand subscribers, he will get another blood on the clock tower. Tattoo, which is what I was going. What is what more was I oh, alluding sorry. to? Sorry, I got a new, <laughs> I got a brand new it's tattoo shovel. today. Yeah. It is a shovel, but it is also it is also somewhat of an inside running joke that the character associated with this the Undertaker icon, which has a very good, very powerful ability. Never use it, never gets to use it because they are always the first one dead randomly, too. Usually, it's yeah. not targeted, it just it's happens. Like you know. they just and die. being the storyteller and watching the demon wake up and point to that player every time I put that demon back to sleep, and I'm like, How? And then this is the best, this is the best part. This is the best part is when I wake everybody up, I tell everybody who's died. And it's always the inevitable question, what were you? Because once you're dead, who gives a fuck? What were you? The Undertaker. <laughs> and then it's just fucking groans and sighs all over the place. Even the demons got to fucking play into, oh, God, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. That is my second clock tower tattoo on the same arm. I mean, really, I know that's not a clock tower tattoo, but if you add some little claws to the, the paw... I can throw. throw. <laughs> Just saying, count it. the The collection will grow though. The arm will be Thousand sleeved at some point. Yeah, help us get there. Help him get there. It's getting there no matter what. <laughs> I don't know. You're supposed to bait them, convince them. Five thousand subscribers, and I'll wow. I'll do face tat. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a good thing we're never going to get there. <laughs> Dude, like five years from now. I know. When people inflation happens. Peep inflation? Peep inflation. <laughs> All right. That's you? Yeah. Okay. And I will uh, end the highlight portion with talking about the recent game night that happened hosted by our friends at 210 GameCon. They have a. I'm pretty sure it's weekly, or maybe it's bi-weekly, game night that they host at Black Potion. And I typically do most of my gaming here at home, but I haven't played with them in a while, so I made it a point to go and hang out and play games with them. And when I showed up, I was a little bit late, so they were already in the game, and I was a little bit sad because we were supposed to play Dominant Species. But I got there late, and then when they finished their game, it was just not going to happen. It was going to be too much time. But... The game that I started playing and the game that they were in and stopped playing, or not stopped playing, but they finished, ended. we all ended just about the same. So we ended up able to get together, being able to get together and finish out the night playing Night of the Ninja, which was a surprising amount of fun. It was actually really fun. Um, Playing some Werewoods. 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 (laughs) What's it called? Werewoods. Werewoods. Playing, and then Courtesans. Courtesans. That was really fun, too. And yeah, it was just a good night of gaming, and I got to have a couple drinks because Black Potion is a bar, for, you, for those of you who don't know. But yeah, I had a couple of drinks, hung out with my friends. I also got to hang out and play games with my best friend, Derek. So I have multiple friends named Derek now. <laughs> <laughs> There's three of you, surprisingly. But yeah, it was awesome to play with two of you at the same time. And I uh, just had a good night of gaming. So yeah. Go hit up Black I- Potion. If you are in the San Antonio area. Yeah. Mm. Or if you live on the east side of town, which I guess it's also on the east side of town, not or. And if you live on the east side of town, check out the Printed Meep, too. They have a really good membership. Mm-hmm. They just membership. redid their store as, as well. Like mm-hmm. the uh, 
the look of it. Inside, outside? Inside. Oh, cool. So it was like, so it's damn near the entire uh, place is gaming space now. Oh, really? And so what they do to the retail section? It's that back wall. The entire back wall. They just put it on the wall. Is retail. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. That was, and it's like it looks for some. I like. I don't know, man. It it looks like a space is ten times bigger, and it's just. Oh, it's good. That space is, and it looks good. Yeah, it looks nice. My only complaint, the one time I went to the meeple with you guys, was that I was like, it's really small, and like if you didn't like. What would be more frustrating than being like, hey, guys, let's get together and go play a game, and then you show up to a place and there's nowhere to sit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was a and there's frustrated. 12, and there's 12 tables of people playing Magic 1v1. <laughs> uh, it was interesting listening to Enrique talk about, like, how Magic the Gathering changes the space. Yeah, it really does. And, like, how, like, as a board game store owner, you have to be, like, kind of careful about, like, hey, like, this is either th- you're either going to do that. That's going to be a your Magic thing. store. Or you're going to be like, I have to control this. Like, you can have these tables. You can come in with this, whatever. But don't want this to become, like, a massive all-the-time thing. Because, yeah, I mean, it's a lot. It it does. I I do feel like it, I don't want to say alienates, but that's the only word I can think of right now. It is a little bit alienating if you walk into a place. If you don't know what Magic is or if you're not a Magic gamer and you see everyone in the place is playing Magic and you see that every time you happen to walk into the store because they have magic night three nights a week yep you're like this isn't the place for me the yeah, same thing with uh the rpg stuff like when they yeah. do the big rpg night on, it's on wednesdays isn't it yeah yeah like it's you like if you don't know what's going on and you walk into that and you're like whoa yeah like because it's every table has got an rpg campaign of some kind going on i don't know if it's all D or not but it's a lot it's a lot, a lot. And all the tables are taken, and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, well, maybe I'll just... You don't know it's RPGs, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, maybe I'll just I'll just wait so I can play my bigger game with my friend at one of the tables. Or And then it's six hours later, and their campaign is still going, and you're yeah. like, okay, I guess I'm just going to go home. So it's just interesting. Again, nothing wrong with it. It's great stuff, like yeah. RPGs. You just play magic, that. but it's definitely a vibe. And it's something that when I first started, when I was like first into board gaming and going to stores and stuff... I don't. Really, I didn't really think about that stuff because I'm not a game store owner. I don't have to think about it. But over the years of visiting now many different game stores and starting to be a person that plays at the game store, and not just going by and come back home, mm. it's something I've noticed. But yeah, hard to must be hard to manage. Anyways, so, I don't know how we got there. Yeah, check out all the places. Yeah. San Antonio locals, not even just printed meep and black and black potion. That's just East Side. Night Watch. Night Watch. Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair. Gamers, Gamers, Gamers Gems. Gems. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. All all neat places for sure. And if you're not from San Antonio, support your local, friendly local game store. Yeah. Wherever you are. Or just drive to San Antonio and support ours. <laughs> <laughs> so that but we not on Monday. Because so printed meeple and black potion are both, both closed on Monday. Uh, no, Night Watch is no, open. Is open. No yeah. East Side All Gaming. Week. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, you, you you made us you made a, a you said a word that made me think, and I was curious if you guys have heard about the uh, the meeple controversy. Oh my gosh! I guess we did. We you want to comment well, on? Yeah, we might as well talk about it. Yeah. Um, so Hansim Gluck. Yeah. Were you proud of me for that one? Oh, good job. Okay. Hansim Gluck is a. <laughs> Is a board game company? Yeah. I'm not really sure. It's a pair of, pair of designers. I can't remember their names, but yeah. Apparently, years ago, they have... Like they, f- five years ago. They filed for and were given the copyrights to the usage of the word meeple. Now, if you play board games at all, you've probably heard the word meeple hundreds and hundreds of times. How many times have you heard the words Hans im Gluck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you've probably heard of their game, though. Because I will tell you, I probably have heard of their game, but I'll tell you that it's the first time I've heard of that, those words, like the publisher even being associated with that word specifically. Yeah. And I'm not German, so maybe that's what it is, right? But no. Hans im Gluck, they, there's a, a game on Kickstarter called meeple party or some crap no, like that. so 
the 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 recent drama came up because of a small indie company like a like a a, a couple i think a, a married couple maybe um had uh developed this game called meeple inc and which was a a board game about designing board games uh it did fairly well and um i do believe uh what happened was Heinz and Gluck sent a cease and desist letter, um, something along that lines, uh, and basically the uh, company, oh, by the way, the company that was um, making the game was called uh, Cogito Ergo Meepo, Meeple, um, uh, and so they had to change their name, or they chose to change their name, and then they changed the game from Meeple Inc. to, I think, Tabletop Inc. or something like that, um, specifically, just to avoid it, just to get rid of it um the problem altogether uh, but like if you know anything about the board game space like there are tons it's of very, board games it's very community driven as well yeah that have have that they have the term meeple um and if you dig into it there's a couple really good videos out there um i can't remember there's a a, a, a independent board game creator who has a really good like 20 minute video that really dives into it and gets into the history of it um maybe maybe you post a link to it or something um but um she does a really good job of unpacking like the history of the term meeple. And the thing that rubs me raw about the Heinz and Gluck piece of it specifically <laughs> is Car uh, Carcassonne didn't originally call them meeples. Meeple was a term literally generated by user players of the game online. Like we, the people invented the term in later editions of Carcassonne, they started introducing the term into the game, like, into the rule book and the components. Up. And now their beef, their thing, the reason why they're like, oh, you know, we we have to put out these, these legal claims to continue to defend our trademark. So they have a UN trademark and they also have a German trademark. Uh, and there's some specific differences between the two about what that covers and whatnot. And again, the video, she covers it all in great detail. I'm not going to try to to summarize it. But well, Kevin, you know that I love rumors and starting them. And I heard that, yes, part of it, they were like, oh, well, actually, we have to send these out, blah, 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 blah. I also heard that they were like, oh, well, really, because we made it up, um, we made the term up. We really are fine with sharing it that you you're allowed to use it. Just as long as you pay us a small fee, you know, just pay us a small fee, and we'll let you we'll let you use it. No big deal. So and maybe I'm wrong. You you are wrong. That would be annoying. You are wrong. So they did release a statement saying that, um, and it was something really snarky um, to the effect that they would they would allow people to use it if they if you basically coordinated with them ahead of time. Um, so the grace of the scenario for for people who who are in the United States is that they don't have a U.S. trademark, and I don't think they've applied for a U.S. trademark. But of course, if you're a game company and you're trying to produce games for both the American and the European markets specifically, you're going to come across troubles with that. There was a, a couple people in the United States that were debating on um, trying to trademark the term in the United States. And their argument, the reason that they said they were going to do it, was to protect it because they would make the trademark or make the use of it public use. Mm -hmm. But they would also that like, oh, you know, just just give credit or whatever, something like that. And it was like, stop it. Stop it. Like yeah. It's just it's a public term, like it's, it's a term it's, that the community came up with. Stop trying to trademark it. Yeah, just because just because everyone else basically created this term, and no one has claimed ownership, you can't just be like, "That's mine." Mine. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 absolutely ridiculous. It's uh, it's really a shame, and you know, it's. It, I really hope it all fails. I hope it all fails miserably. I hope that we stop trying to trademark these types of things um, and we can go back to being a happy, hunky, dory group of community people who like playing board games and don't have to get over stupid legal disputes. Or about. 10 years from now, Supreme Court case precedent <laughs> set for the people of the United States of gamers versus <laughs> Hans, Hans and Gluck. <laughs> yeah. I had a very visceral reaction. I thought about, I was like, man, I don't need Carcassonne that much. 
<laughs> I'm gonna burn it. <laughs> and I was like, that's ah, fine. It doesn't matter. This I'm house. And you know what, Handsome Gluke? Stop stop printing 50,000 different versions of Carcassonne. Make a new game. <laughs> yeah. How about you do that? How about you copyright a new game? How about that? Yeah. Huh? And if you're going to make a new version of Carcassonne, the big box, how about you make one that's uh. actually small and actually fits the components on only what it needs rather than having 75% wasted space? Yeah. Every three months, we don't need a new copy of Carcassonne every three months and like this version is the mint green version and the box is slightly different color and all of the trees on the inside are I actually like, fall trees and like we've we've the, gone into Microsoft Paint and hit uh, replace blue with green do you know and how many like, big here's boxes 40 more dollars Shut I, the fuck. do you know how many big I boxes like, they've really, they produced seven different editions of the big box I like Carcassonne I'm going to trademark big boxes so you, I can charge you for every single time you try and make a big box version of something I'd be like actually I have the biggest box and I, so I invented them shut your freaking board game box <laughs> I'm never buying Carcassonne because of that I mean honestly too bad you're not getting your $15 from me for that game okay the target, the target, target buy two get one free can deals. Go buy that game. Never. I would rather buy Cards Against Humanity before I buy Cards Against Humanity. Whoa, Zone. you don't believe that for a second. I 100% believe that. So I can gift Cards Against Dwayne? Humanity to someone who doesn't have brain cells to understand Carcassonne. What do you think, Dwayne? About the whole situation? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite meeple shape? My favorite meeple shape. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to beep that so, that <laughs> yeah, we, don't, so we don't get sued. Hey, this is this <laughs> is YouTube, America. This is YouTube. America. We believe in American freedoms, like using the word meeple. YouTube copyright check is gonna. Don't tread on me. I'm or being, the word meeple. I'm also being. You know, I'm being. I'm trying to be playful about it, right? But I am being extremely absurdly exagger over exaggerated. I don't actually have any animosity. Towards the people of the company, I more just think that it's a silly thing to try to claim as something you created when you clearly did not. It's pretty wet. It sounds pretty stupid. Yeah. yeah. For, yeah. Just for legal so, clarification, I'm being silly. Okay, I'm not accusing anyone. Favorite meeple shape. Uh, I'm a. I'm gonna have to go. Isn't the meeple a, a shape? So the trademark does cover a very specific shape of meeple, like the, the little carcassonne meeples. Yeah. Right? The ones with those certain types of arms. But okay. Meeple, of course, according to the rest of us who are smart and intelligent human beings, understand that Meeples come in many different shapes, sizes, and forms and colors. So I... So. The Penguin Honestly, Meeples? Uh, penguin Meeples? Penguin Meeples. Oh. From, Mark, from Arknoba. From Arknoba. Yeah. Because they're the only ones that are multicolored. They got that character. They, I'm got, not, they got a little personality. The Spaceman Meeples... And on Mars, mm. they're pretty cool. Yeah, I yeah. wish I could have played with them. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> I think I might throw my hat on the Great Western Trail meeples because they get the little hats. Mm, you know, yeah, I don't have that version. You know, I'm, you know uh, a meeple that I hate. You know a meeple that I fucking can't stand Capricorn. and I despise. Goddamn. Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking bitch. Wow, okay. Every time you say that, I'm like, oh, that that's fl just... That flipping bird. <sighs> she's, I, a, she's a woman. She has a family. She's just a hardworking hey, no, lady. No, 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 no. She, she is, is not given, actively looking. She is not given a family canonically until Vital, <laughs> until Vital bestows one upon her. Right now, hey, she's a lonely, about... salty cat lady, and she takes it out on the floor workers <laughs> of the greatest <laughs> electric vehicle company in the history of games, okay? Speaking of cat lady, the little cat meeple... That one's a nice one. Which one? In what game? Cat Lady. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's a that cute one. one. I like that game. You did you play it? Did uh, you play it with us? No. No? Honestly, That's the good game. The Habitat Jeeps are pretty cool, too. Habitat yeah. Jeeps are cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it cheating? Dinosaur Island. Is it cheating mm -hmm. because yeah. they're upgrades, all the meeples and habitats? No, it's not cheating. I mean, it's... It's a meeple. Yeah. I mean... It, that fucking box no, turtle? But actually, they, but they no, were made specifically no, to be no, cool. I don't... So, interesting... I'm not actually sure that the dinosaurs or in, in Dinosaur Island or the those upgrades in habitats are meeples. And I say that because meeple is an abbreviation for my people, right? So, like, 
in Dinosaur Island, your meeples are your workers, the visitors, and your scientists. The guests. Yeah, no, the well, they're also, but there's not. Those aren't. I mean, they're the meeple shape, but they're not your people. I guess they're your visitors. But like the dinosaurs, I don't know. I don't know if that is. Same with like the jeep. That's you, and the other things are the things you collect. Well, the no. jeep is the jeep is you. But oh, I don't the know, other like animals. If, yeah, the other animals. That's you. mine. I put it on my tile. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think we're. I'm definitely. Meeple is a vibe. Splitting hairs here. You know. I definitely think if it's a little car, if it's a little yeah. wood guy, it's a meeple. It's, it's a meeple. Yeah, in my opinion too. I mean, I'm not going to totally disagree with that. I'm just trying to. Make you partially disagree with it. <laughs> partially. <laughs> I mean, partially. Which part would you agree with? <laughs> is 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 okay? I mean, it's yours, right? It's a part of your like. That's what I was thinking. How, how right? far so do like, you go though? Like. Inventions. Well, because it's also people. Are those my people? The well, the no, not the heads. Oh. The the pillars. No. So no, you, those are again, objects. Well, no. So it's back to the thing. So like, you are not a dinosaur. Oh, so back, bad, dude. You are not the dinosaur in Dinosaur Island. You are not. You could be whatever you want to be. Don't let him tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I lost my headphones. Too bad Clock Tower don't got no meeples. <gasps> Beep boop. As I was saying, people. I put carnival music over that. <laughs> people. <laughs> it says people, right? You are not the. That's not the. You are the. The. the they representative of like the character, right? So like the dinosaurs or the animals aren't people. Is it? They're many not people? your people. No, it's my people. It's not my people. Yes, that's dumb. That makes the trademark worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is. Well, that was the original acronym, right? So like the the I think it was the like a woman on a like a forum or a post or whatever. Like she's like, yeah, we abbreviate. It's like they're my people, meeple. No, the definition should just be it's a little wooden guy in your board. I do know that habitats says jeeple. (laughs) Oh, are you serious? (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. I did it again. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) God damn. Kevin Kevin is having too great of a time over here. Getting too excited. So I guess you could throw that on a deeple. Deeple? Dinosaur, dinosaur people, people? Yeah. but they're not you. You're not the dinosaur. They're things that you've like bred. Animeeps. DNA. They are mine. Animeeps. Animeeples. Yeah. Come on. If I said animeeples, if I said animeeples, nothing in your brain would combat that. Animeeples. 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 No, because it'd be my. No, it'd be. It would be. Meemals, meemals. It'd be a meemals, my animals, not no, my people. See, that's meemals. why it's not. That's why it shouldn't be my people. That's why it's just many dudes. Well, many, now many you're peeps. just now you're just revising history to fit your narrative, <laughs> dude. My narrative. Well, is if it's the if correct it's, one, if it's my people, yeah. In meeple, it would be my dinosaur, so it would be minosaur. Minosaur. That is really cute. Yeah. Dang, dude. Yeah, there you go. I'll give you that one. I try. I want to make minosaur? up a Valentine's yeah. card. A minosaur. Just for that. If we we're both dinosaurs, Minosaurus. you'd be Minosaur. <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid. Borden <laughs> scale Valentine podcast uh, greeting cards. Can meeples only be wood? We'll be releasing them with our uh, boudoir calendar. Ooh, our boudoir. <laughs> can, can meeples be plastic? Yeah, 100%. No. Yeah. It has to be wood. <laughs> well, now you're just being discriminatory against. Then, then the dinosaurs plastics. from Dinosaur Island can't be meeples. Yeah. If I'm if, fine with it, I'm fine with it. Didn't you just say that I said they had to be wooden dudes? Uh, wood dudes. Uh, <laughs> let's let's trademark wood Weeples. dudes. Wood dudes Weeple. and start calling. I will say though, Weeples. anytime I hear the word meeple, I think little wooden piece. Yeah, hundred percent. It's the it's, the, it's yeah. the so the thing is like you cannot avoid the fact that like when you say meeple, like you, you do get a very specific image that comes to mind at first, right? And it's, but you also it's that shape. But I you also think meeple like, it can can be anything. I, I yeah. give it to plastic. That's fine because the visitors they are plastic in Dinosaur Island. Yeah, they are meeples. Yeah, they're okay. the meeple list of meeples. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure they're a one for one shape too. Yeah, yeah. All right. For legal reasons, they may or may not be 100% the one for one <laughs> shape according to the trademark. Look, it's not our job to defend Pandasaurus. They got a legal team. I'm sure they'll be fine. That's true. But Do Pandasaurus. They have a legal team? I don't know. Hey, Pandasaurus, we're looking out for you. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you we look love out courtesans. for us. 
Yeah. We love NAR. Maybe you look out for our he address really and send us a copy a of copy your news of game. Emerge. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, we're going Emerge to Emerge has meeples. We're going to Flincon. I can put it in the bazaar. <laughs> Treeples. Wow. Treeples, you're right. Oh, I love Treeples is a good one. They got they got little sea C- people. They got sea leeples. They got turdy turdyples. Turdy turdyples. <laughs> and crabbyples. All right, everybody. Creeples. He's playing the, the manure farming board game. Turdyples. <laughs> That's gonna do it for this loopy episode of the Board and Scale podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope you so enjoyed it. So happy to be back. Yeah, we're oh, ha- we're, I, we're I, I'm happy. You're happy. Yeah, I hope you're happy. It's it's fine. Oh, it's all a good six time. Of you. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna try and get back on the wagon or off the wagon. On the wagon. That's Drink the wagon. We fell off and we we're, we and now we're back on. Yeah, we like tr- fucking trailed behind. Uh, we got ran over by the car and it kept going for a little. <laughs> yeah, but it but it was a slow wagon. We caught up. Yeah, yeah. Um, with square wheels. Oregon Oregon Trail. We had some dysentery. Yeah, they got stuck at the river. We're here to help them cross. Oregon Trail is a horrible board game. Don't ever touch it. <laughs> that shit is so fun, bro. Stop it. The board game? The little card game, right? Yes. Dude. Yeah, that shit's so fun. That is the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe if you want to see this. Uh, leave a comment if you think we should kick him out for saying that Oregon Trail is a good game. And you Get the fuck out of here. You said you would buy Cards Against Humanity over Carcassonne. I don't want to hear that. give away. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Bye.